we can find the solution xk of a few discrete systems. However, a formula is not easily visualized. We want to have some graphical representation of solutions of a dynamical system. Such a graphical representation exists. It is called a phase space. In this video, you will learn how to draw such a phase space. Let us start with an example where we have four points x0, x1, x2 and x3 given. Just some points, no matrix or whatever behind, but just to learn how to draw a phase space. What are we going to do? We draw an xy plane and on the x-axis we put xk1 and on the y-axis we put xk2. So the first component of all vectors we put on the x-axis, the second component on the y-axis. And then we draw all points, in this case just four, in the diagram. So we start with 3, 4, which comes here, then 2, 3, which comes right here, then 1, 2, which comes approximately here, and finally 1 half 1, which goes here. And then we also would like to indicate the direction in which the points are going. So those four points are starting here and co going there. And in order to show this, we draw a curve through the points, even though in between, there, strictly speaking, there is nothing. But we still we draw a curve through all the points in order to get an impression how the points behave and w in which direction they are going. Something like this. And we put arrows to show where they are going. So that's the general idea. Now let's draw some phase spaces for the examples from one of the previous videos. Suppose we have xk plus 1 equals d times xk. So let's put a diagonal matrix here. Take for example d equals t2003. And let's compute some points like we have over here. Let's compute them. If we start with x0 equals 1, 0, so let's start somewhere at 1, 0, for example, then we get x1 by computing d times x0, which yields 2, 0, and I compute x2, which equals d times x2, x1, which yields 4, 0. So what do we see? If I start on the x-axis, then I stay on the x-axis. The second component stays zero. And if I would go on, I would still stay on the x-axis. That will help us to draw the phase diagram. Let's start on the y-axis instead. If we start with 0, 1, then I get x1 by computing d times x0, which gives me 0, 3. And if I go on, I, I compute, for example, x2. I compute this by computing d times x1, which gives me the vector 0, 9. So we are still on the y-axis. If I start on the y-axis, we stay on the y-axis. So if we combine this, we get the red arrows. We start on the x-axis and we grow bigger, so we go there. If we start on the y-axis, we stay on the y-axis and we go grow bigger, so we go there. The same if we would start with negative x or y. And then the other, the purple arrows are drawn. Well, just uh, look at the picture. If I would start here, where, where should I go? You should kind of follow the arrows. All arrows are going out, so if you would start here, you have to go out as well. If you start here, you have to go out as well. That's why the purple curves are going out. And because we are going faster out along the uh, y direction, that means we are going to infinity, but we are going slightly faster in the y direction than in the x direction. That is how we draw this phase space over here. The origin is again an equilibrium point, but as you see, if I start very close to the origin, I'm repelled away. That's why this equilibrium point in the origin now is called a, so a repeller.
what happens if both lambdas are not bigger than one as over here, but smaller than one? So if I would have one half and one third, we make the same picture. But now, uh, if I start on the x-axis, I start for example at one zero, the next one will be one half zero, and then one quarter zero. So I will go in. If I start on the y-axis with one, one zero, I get one third zero, uh, sorry, uh, zero over one third, zero over one over nine, and I go in along the y-axis. So how do we draw the full picture? Well, no matter where I start, follow the arrows, they are all going inside, which means if you start over here, I have to go inside towards the origin. And uh, uh, y with the one third is killed fastest, because it goes to zero fastest, which means that we go to zero along the x-axis. Now, everything which starts close to the origin is drawn into the origin. The origin is attracting all trajectories, and that's why the origin is now called an attractor. And then obviously one option is left. If we take one smaller than one and the other eigenvalue bigger than one, say one half and two. In this case, if I go along the x-axis, I'm drawn into the origin. However, if I go along the y-axis, we are in this case, we are pushed away from the origin. So here we have a combination of, of arrows going inside and outside. How do we finish the picture now? Now again, follow the arrows. If I'm somewhere over here, the arrows point like this. If I'm somewhere, I'm somewhere over here, arrows point like that. This combination of two, one attracting direction and another repelling direction is called a saddle point. And there, we have all three possibilities in case that we have a diagonal matrix.